Hi, my name is Liz Castro. I'm an American who's been living off and on in Catalonia for about, well, since 1987. Um, and I know a lot about um, the Catalan independence process and about Catalonia in general. And I want to explain a little bit about October 1st, um, in part because we're about to have these elections on October, on December 21st, and, they, and what happened on October 1st is really important. Um, what happened on October 1st, a lot of us saw um, through the images that came through social media, um, images of police beating people who were waiting to vote. Um, now let me tell you a little bit about the story about where that came out of, what happened, why, why were people voting on October 1st, why did the um, Spanish government say that that was illegal, that that was impossible, why didn't we just have a referendum like they did in Scotland? Um, we actually wanted to have a referendum like they had in Scotland. That was the that was the original plan, um, and we've been trying to do that for about the last ten years. Um, we have made repeated we when I speak about we I mean independentists in general um, have made repeated requests of the Spanish government to allow a referendum. Many constitutional scholars have said that the Spanish constitution actually would allow for having a, a referendum on Catalan independence, but the Spanish government under the, the PP, the, the Partido Popular, and Mariano Rajoy have insisted that that is absolutely impossible, that you couldn't possibly ever have a vote. In fact, um, back in 2009, one of the very first attempts, um, kind of a quixotic attempt to, to gauge um, public opinion about independence was held in this really tiny little town called Arrange de the Moon, uh, population 8,000. It's about a half an hour north of Barcelona. And the people there decided that they wanted to, to ask about, refer, uh, about independence. And um, they passed a motion in the city hall to have a non-binding, non-official poll. Um, and a, a party, Ciudadanos, um, said that that was unheard of. How could you ask about Catalan independence? And uh, they, they filed suit against that poll, and they got the judge to annul the, um, the plenary motion, which said that they were going to have this poll on September 13th, 2009. Um, and what happened was um, the people said, okay, the people in the, in the government said, that's fine, we won't have it in the city hall, we'll have it in the, the civic center next door, because it's, we think that it's important to ask people about their opinion about things. Um, and at the same time, this, this fascist group called the Falange decided that it was going to march in Reins the Moon that very same day. And this time, um, people who didn't think that there should be a fascist march brought that to the judge, and the judge said, no, 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 that's perfectly fine, it's freedom of expression. Um, so there were these two kind of opposing, uh, you know, events. Uh, you're not allowed to ask people what they think in a poll, but it's perfectly fine if the fascists march. That created a lot of um, reaction around this poll, and more people ended up voting on September 13, 2009 in the Range de the Moon on Catalan independence than had actually voted for um, the Statute of Autonomy referendum. So it really gathered a lot of support. It also brought people from around Catalonia who were really interested in people being able to voice um, you know, their support. And so um, this started a whole wave of uh, Catalan independence referenda, always non-binding, non-official, with no government support. Um, and in about 18 months, they held more than 500 of these informal polls organized by people, ground, grounds, um, grassroots assemblies, um, saying, you know, we want to have this vote. We're allowed to, you know, ask people what they think. And since they were non-official, the government kind of pretty much looked the other way. The Catalan government wasn't very interested in them either. Um, but more than 800,000 people participated. Catalan uh, population is about 7.5 million. Um, and more importantly, this sort of, um, this movement organized about uh, around the, this idea of the right to decide, the fact that Catalans have a right to determine their own future, like any nation. In fact, it's the right of self-determination is enshrined in the, in the uh, United Nations um, Charter. Uh, people are allowed to choose how they should be governed. That's the, one of the basic principles of democracy. Um, and so people organized around this idea and they created these polls. And then once they were over, um, they kind of were looking for, okay, they'd gotten all of this experience, how to um, you know, set up a poll, how to give out information, even, you know, skills like how to create a pamphlet and how to get permits and whatnot. Um, so anyway, so once those polls were over, um, the next step was uh, they created this thing called the Catalan National Assembly, which is a grassroots uh, volunteer group whose mission was to try to seek independence. Um, 
it began in, in 2011, 2012, and in 2012 it decided to hold uh, the first march for in, in favor of independence, and it organized it for September 11th, 2012. September 11th is the Catalan National Day. It commemorates the day that Catalans lost the war of Spanish succession. Um, they had sided with an Austrian um, pretender to the crown, whereas the uh, Castile had sided with the Bourbons, the French Bourbons, um, who reign to this day. The Catalans lost. They lost Barcelona fell after a year-long siege in uh, September 11th, 1714, and that day has been celebrated as the Catalan National Day to remember um, that defeat, actually. Um, so, so anyway, so they decide to have this um, demonstration on September 11, 2012. They don't start it in Barcelona. They just start it actually in June 30th in Lleida, in a town in the west of Catalonia. And over the course of the summer, there's 487 additional practice rallies all over the territory to kind of, you know, drum up support and get people interested and, and get people organized. Um, and on September 11th, a million people come out. The Catalan government, where is it in all this time? The Catalan government is like, ah, we're not really interested in independence. We ran on a platform of trying to get a better fiscal deal with, with Spain, and that's what we're going to do. The, the, Spanish pre the Catalan president at that time tried to get the uh, march organizers to change the slogan of the march so that it was about the fiscal pact and not about independence. And the president of the Asamblea, her name was Carma Forcadei, she said, you know what, if you come to our march, we're going to count you as an independentist. And this is a march for independence, and if you don't want to come, that's fine, but this is what we're voting for. A million people showed up for that march on September 11th, 2012. It was huge. It was huge. Really surprised um, and overwhelmed people. And, um, and it made it clear that, that independence was on the table. It was something that people wanted. The Catalan president still was like, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm not really for independence. He goes to Madrid on September 20th and talks to Mariano Rajoy. And he says, look, all these people are out on the street. They're calling for independence. What we need is a better fiscal deal. Everybody recognizes that, that the, the Spanish spending in Catalonia is way uh, below what it should be. 10% infrastructure spending when there, we are 16% of the population, 20% of the GDP, 25% of exports. Why are you, you know, underspending in Catalonia? It's unfair. And Rajoy says, no. It's kind of stupid if you think about it. I mean, it would have been much more intelligent to say, hold on, we'll talk about it. Maybe we can come to some kind of a deal, but he doesn't. He says no. And the president, Mas, comes back. Actually, he has a press conference in Madrid that day and says, you know, I did the best that I could, and this isn't working out. There's no way that we're ever going to convince them to get a better fiscal pact. We need to think about what we're going to do. And, and the following Monday, he calls for snap elections on November 25th, 2012, on a platform of holding a referendum to see what Catalans want about their own political future. Remember that this is the over, uh, this is the, 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 the question that people keep talking about. Catalans have the right to decide, and they do, like any nation. So um, Mas loses, actually, uh, a fair number of seats in those elections, but the other party, Esquerra, gains um, a lot of seats. And independence uh, parties in general win, um, and they have an absolute majority in the uh, parliament, and Mas forms a government um, with Esquerra's support, and they decide that they're going to have a non-binding referendum. He has campaigned on this promise, and that's what he says he'll do. Um, and so over the next two years, there are two more huge demonstrations, a human chain that's 400 kilometers long, that's 250 miles from one end of the country to the other, demanding for this uh, that this referendum take place. Um, and the following year, there's a huge uh, letter V for victory, for vote, um, and in the center of Barcelona, in the colors of the Catalan flag, it's again, it's, you know, a million and a half people come out on the street um, to insist that we have this, this referendum. The Spanish government, meanwhile, says, absolutely not. You're not allowed to ask people what their opinion is. We won't ever, ever agree to it. Uh, a delegation had gone in April of 2014 to, um, to get permission from the Spanish Congress because the Spanish Congress could have said, sure, we'll let you have you know, a referendum, even a non-binding referendum on independence, but they didn't. They refused. They vote against it. They say, no, we won't ever let you do that. The Spanish president continues to say, no, you're not allowed to. And the Catalan government goes ahead and they pass a law of non-binding referendum in September of 2014. The Spanish uh, Constitutional Court, which took four years to strip down 
the Catalan Statute of Autonomy um, between the Saturday that that vote is um, registered in the Catalan Bulletin and becomes official, uh, by Monday it's already the Constitutional Court has already suspended the law. It has never moved more quickly in its entire history. It's just crazy. So. And the, and the Catalan government doesn't quite know what to do. It says, all right, well, you know, the, the law is suspended, so should we go forward, should we not? A couple, a week or so goes by, and there's negotiations, and they finally decide, the, actually the president decides on his own, that instead of breaking that law uh, uh, of the constitutional court ruling, instead of going against the constitutional court ruling, what it'll do is it'll have a participatory process. And this participatory process will be run by volunteers. 40,000 people sign up over a weekend, and they say, all right, we're going to be there. We're going to make this vote happen. It's going to be non-official and non-binding, but it doesn't matter because what we're really trying to do is find out what Catalans want. They go ahead. We have this vote. A uh, million, eight hundred thousand people vote in favor of independence. About 300,000 or so vote no. Um, and, uh, and it's, complete, it's seen as a non-official vote. November 9th, 2014. And now the president, the Catalan president says, all right, so what we're going to do to make that vote official is we're going to have parliamentary elections um, and we're, we'll use those parliamentary elections as a kind of a referendum. Since Spain refuses to let us vote in an official, normal way, we'll use our elections as a kind of a, a plebiscite. And that's what happens in the fall of 2015. People, um, the, the candidates campaign and they say, all right, well, if you vote for uh, Junts per Si, which is the Together for Yes coalition between uh, Convergencia and Esquerra, the sort of center left and center right parties, um, the reverse, um, or if you vote for the CUP, those will be counted as yes votes. And if you vote for unionist parties like um, the PP, the Partido Popular, or Ciudadanos, or PSC, the socialists, um, those will be considered as no votes. Um, but then there's this, these people in between, which are called the communes. They're sort of the, like the Podemos party, except not quite, um, because, well, anyway, it's complicated. But anyway, they said, we don't want you to count us either as a yes or a no. We don't believe in you know, having, using the parliamentary elections as a plebiscite on independence. So fine. So what happens on September 27th, 2015? Uh, the yes parties get 48%. The no parties get 39%. And the parties that refuse to, to position themselves get 11%. So the yes parties have a clear majority in the parliament, but they don't have more than 50% of the votes. And so they consider themselves that not to be enough of a, uh, a mandate to move forward on a declaration of independence. There's a, a fairly long three-month period in which the two pro-independence parties uh, wrangle over who should be the president. Um, in the new parliament. And they finally come to an agreement on uh, January 9th or 10th, I forget, in which it'll be Carles Puigdemont, who's the current president of the, of the Catalan government. Um, and how they're going to move forward to, um, to implement independence when really they, they've only been able to manage 48% of the popular vote. Um, and so the next period between January 2016 and October 1st, 2017 is a new um, period in which um, we try to figure out how to move forward. And finally, the, the Catalan president says, look, and this happens in September of 2016, he says, the best way to figure out what Catalans want is to ask them in a binding official vote. We're going to have to have a referendum, referendum no matter what. And the Spanish government, again, as well as the opposition parties in the parliament say, you cannot ask people what they think. That is not okay. It's against the Spanish constitution. Heaven forbid. You can't possibly ask people what they believe about Catalan independence. You're always talking about independence, and you, just have, you should just give it up, because we're never, ever going to let you. I couldn't do it if I wanted to, said the Spanish president, Rajoy. Of course, he doesn't want to. He doesn't make any effort. He doesn't ever even ask, like, gee, what's going on? Why are you so interested in independence? He doesn't ask, he doesn't want to know, and he refused to make it possible. The Catalan government, meanwhile, says, you know, we promised to have a referendum, and that's the way to solve this, the, the, to, to figure out a difficult question. You educate the people, and you, um, and, and you have debates, and you talk about what this new country will look like, and then you have a vote. This is democracy. You had to complicate it, so you, you, know, you let people vote about it, yes or no. And so the Catalan government says, we're going to have a binding official referendum on October 1st, 2017.
The Spanish government the whole time says, there will be no referendum, you cannot have a referendum, we will do everything in our power, including using the army, to stop you from voting. And through the summer, um, they start to ramp up this campaign of trying to sabotage the referendum. Um, and it all, it, it starts to come really to a head at the beginning of September, when the Catalan parliament passes what they call the referendum law. And the referendum law basically says, we're going to hold a referendum on October 1st, 2017, the results of that referendum will be binding, and if there's 50% plus one of the votes in favor, then we will implement a declaration of independence and the independence of the Catalan Republic. And uh, the question will be, do you want Catalonia to be an independent republic? And, um, and if we lose, then we will abide by those results and we will immediately call uh, regular Catalan parliamentary elections. They passed that uh, referendum law on September 6th and 7th. Um, and the opposition doesn't like it, but it's done in a, put, put, in a perfectly legal way. It's passed by a majority of the Catalan parliament. It says, we're going to have this referendum. And so um, from that moment forward, Spain goes into full gear. Um, when the Catalan government publishes a website about the referendum saying where it's to be held and how people can vote, the Spanish government takes down the website. And in the first act of what I consider defiance by the Catalan government, that new website, um, the, the, the website is replaced in a new, uh, a new address on the internet. And the Spanish government takes it down again. And the Catalan government puts it up again. And the Spanish government takes it down again. And then the Spanish government starts to do other things. It raids printing houses where it thinks that the ballot papers are being printed. It um, threatens people who might work in the polling stations with 300,000 euro fines. It confiscates posters, posters that say things like democracy and yes and hello republic. It takes posters away from uh, private citizens who are legally um, hanging them up in spaces that are allotted for that use in the public way. It, um, on September 20th, the, the Spanish government directs the Guardia Civil and the Catalan police to raid the offices of high-ranking Catalan officials and actually arrests um, several of them, more than 10, I forget exactly how many, and takes them into custody. Some of them sleep overnight, uh, multiple nights in, the, um, in jail uh, for organizing this referendum to ask people what they think. There's a demonstration that takes place that that day, September 20th. It's kind of a spontaneous demonstration. People are outraged that the police have gone to the offices of the, the Catalan Department of Economy to arrest people and to, to you know, uh, take away their computers and their documentation to see what they're up to, you know, trying to have this vote. And people gather, 40,000 people gather around the building. Um, the leaders of two civil society groups, the Jordi Cuchart and Jordi Sanchez, the two groups are called Omnium and the Catalan National Assembly, they go and try to help make sure that the crowd uh, stays peaceful, which it does. Um, they help uh, make sure that there's a, a passageway, there's videos that prove that, you know, they try to help make sure that the police can get in and out, that nobody's blocked, that the people stay calm, which they do. They chant, um, but they, there's, there's no violence. Um, and the, the, the Spanish government continues to say there will be no referendum. We're going you know, to go after the teachers or the, the directors of the schools who maintain the schools open. Um, and they, they direct the Catalan police to, um, to close the schools, to seal the schools so that they cannot be used as polling stations. And then it's very interesting what happens. The weekend before the Catalan referendum, October 1st, on the Thursday before, um, groups of, of interested citizens all over Catalonia start planning events in the polling stations, in the schools, back to school parties, volleyball tournaments, chess tournaments. Um, there was a paper, scissors, rock tournament. Um, and parties and um, arts and crafts for the kids and music and concerts and food and just more just all sorts of events with the school community as an excuse to keep the schools open so that on Sunday morning October 1st the schools will be available to be used as polling stations um, and uh, the Spanish government just you know it just doesn't know what to do it's still looking for the ballot boxes uh, because Catalonia doesn't have its own ballot boxes, usually it gets them from the state for their elections. And so the Spanish government knows that it has to find those ballot boxes so that it can try to block 
the vote, but it cannot find them. And what happens? People are in these polling stations all night long, and on the morning of the vote, uh, it's set around 7.30, people start appearing at the, um, people have been outside protecting the polling station since 5 a.m., and some people have stayed overnight. But it's around 7, 7.30, people start arriving with the ballot boxes, and they rush into the schools, and they start setting up the polling stations. And these are um, people who have, um, the, the polling boxes, the, the ballot boxes came, they were manufactured in China, they're shipped to a town in France. From France, they are um, transported to uh, individual people all over Catalonia who then bring them the morning of the referendum. And they, they make it inside the, the polling stations because people are so concerned about being able to vote that they make it happen. They, they, they help the government. Um, and I don't know who brought the ballot boxes, but they, I do know that I saw them appear. Um, and so, the, I mean, it was this incredible, really incredible grassroots attempt um, at democracy, being able to vote, being able to say what you want your future to be like. Um, so, and then, you know, then we see all of these images that people have seen all around the world of the Spanish police who had been stationed in these cruise ships, 10,000 police agents of the Guardia Civils and the, and the Spanish National Police um, had been stationed in these cruise ships in the, in the Barcelona port. They get into their vans and they start attacking different polling stations all over the country. Um, they focus on the polling stations where political leaders were, um, were meant to vote, where the, the president was going to vote, where the president of the parliament was going to vote, where the vice president was going to vote, where the secretary of the economy was going to vote. Um, and they attack those places first because they want to delegitimize de the, um, the referendum. But what they didn't know is that the Catalan government had a plan for having what they call a universal census. And this universal census means that, um, you know, in the 19th century, to make sure that people only voted once, you had to have a list and uh, of the people in your neighborhood, and the people could only vote in that one polling station so that you could mark them off the list, and then they couldn't come and vote again. In the 21st century, we have online technology, and you can put that list online so you can check no matter what polling station a person goes to, you can look and see if they've already voted. And that's what the Catalan government does. And in this way, it makes it possible for um, the people who would have had to vote at a polling station that the Spanish government uh, successfully closes, those people can go to a different polling station and the poll workers can check online to make sure that those people haven't voted someplace else. This is a major blow to the Spanish efforts to derail the referendum. And it's, um, it's not announced until 8.15 on the morning of October 1st. And then we see people um, you know, have this sort of newfound confidence and they really realized we've got the ballot boxes, we've got this universal census to ensure that this is a fair vote. We have these international observers from all over Europe and in fact the world who are watching and who um, later will verify that the, the referendum was carried out in the best possible way and that there was no fraud attempted. Um, and so, um, and then we see these images of the police attacking polling stations. And for me, the, the most amazing part of, the, um, of that day is the reaction of the Catalan people that not only have been stayed up all night in the polling stations to protect them, they've not only made sure that the, polling, that the ballot boxes um, arrive at the stations, they're not only staying outside the polling stations to protect those, those polling stations, but now when they're attacked by the Spanish police, they have their hands up in the air and they say, we're going to vote, we are people of peace, we are not afraid, and they stand there and they take it. And the Spanish police are bashing them with batons. Some, in some places they're using pepper spray. In some places, you know, they're, they're bashing against them with their shields. Um, there are firefighters and Catalan police who, who end up protecting the voters. Um, but the voters don't fight back. They just stand there firm, they stand their ground, and they say, we're gonna vote. And one of the really remarkable things is that by the end of the day, there's more people than there are in the morning. People have been watching those horrific videos of the Spanish police beating Catalan voters and they're afraid, but they don't go home, they come out. And, and maybe in, at five o'clock in the morning they were all independentists making sure that those polls would be open, but by the end of the day there's all kinds of people. There's unionists, there's people that you know aren't really sure one way or the other, but they're saying, look, I don't know if I'm going to vote yes or no. I don't even know if I was going to vote at all. But you're not going to tell me that I can't vote. And you're not going to tell me that 
you know, that you're going to beat up my neighbor who wants to vote because in a democracy you have to be able to have a voice. You have to be able to say what you want about your own political future and we have a right to that. And that's what happened on October 1st. That's why it's so important. And that's why the Spanish government completely flipped out. And since October 1st, what has happened? You know, it's just been vengeance from, you know, one step to the next. It's arrested those two men who tried to keep that, that um, tried and, and succeeded in keeping the, the rally on September 20th peaceful. They, they remain in jail to this day. It's been two months. These are two non-violent democratic activists that the Spanish government keeps in jail. Um, and then the, the Spanish government arrested um, the, 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 the members of the government who had heeded the results of that referendum. 90% of the people say, yes, we want uh, Catalan independence. We came out and voted because this is really important to us. And the Spanish government jails uh, the members of the government and tries to jail the president, except that he leaves the country and he goes to Belgium because he knows that the laws of extradition in Belgium will not allow the Spanish government um, to, to get their hands on him. And so, and, and there's a couple other things that happened that, that I want to talk about in a, in a different video, but this is already going on too long. But, but I just want to give you the, the importance of that moment of being able to vote and, and all of the efforts that were made all the way back from 2009 until October 1st, 2017, so that Catalans would be able to have a voice about their own political future. They have a right to that. They have tried to do it with the Spanish government. The Spanish government has always said it's absolutely impossible. There's no way. We will never, ever allow it. The different parties who have said, yes, yes, we, you know, we will try to, to get the right to vote, they, they have failed. Um, and and there's, there's no way that Spain will ever allow a negotiated vote. Why not? Why won't Spain allow a vote? One, because I think it thinks it might lose. And two, because to allow Catalonia to have a vote is to recognize its sovereignty and to recognize that it is a nation. And Spain's history is based on there being only one nation, Spain. And it's just too much of a blow to its pride to recognize that there are other peoples within this Spanish state that also feel themselves to be a nation. And that's just a shame. It's just a shame because you, they really could have come to an agreement many times over, but it is the Spanish government who has blocked that agreement time and time again. And so the Catalans say, well, you know, so the Spanish government doesn't ever want to negotiate with us. It doesn't want to listen to us. It refused to let us to have a vote. And when we try to have a vote anyway, it beats us. So we should just stick around and say that's okay? No. No, it shouldn't. Because people have a right to be heard. And that's what Catalan said on October 1st. And that's what Catalans continue to say. And, and we'll see you know, what happens on, on uh, Thursday. If Catalans continue to say, look, we are a nation. We have the right to decide. And we're going to use all of the, the tools that are disposable, all of the nonviolent tools, because we eschew violence. We want no violence. We have committed no violence. All we want to do is vote. And they have a right to do that. Thanks for listening.